in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. We come together today to worship on the 13th Sunday after Trinity. You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accordance with your merciful love. It is good to be with you today to worship with you. I'm Reverend Anne. I am the vicar here in the parish of Luton, St Anne with St Christopher. Today is a day of joy and celebration in this parish as later this afternoon our uh, soon to no longer be reader in training Diane Scott will be licensed as a lay reader for this parish. And I do encourage you all to turn to the YouTube uh, channel for St Albans Cathedral at half past two to watch Diane being licensed as the lay reader for this parish. So as we worship together, I invite you and encourage you to keep Diane in your prayers. And as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love, revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins. We use the Kyrie form of confession today. So I invite you to join with me in repeating the last line of each phrase. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. So let us pray. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you have been standing, I invite you now to be seated as we hear the word of God. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 7 to 11. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. 
If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear now the words from Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we hear now Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to the end. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake up from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratis gratify its desires. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I invite you to stand as the gospel is proclaimed. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus came and said to Peter, Rather, Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? I'm sorry, I'm going to start again. I'm reading the wrong reading. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we have a visiting preacher. Bishop Allen, the Bishop of St Albans, will open the word for us.
200 years later in 1665, the Great Plague swept through London, and in just 18 months killed around 100,000 people, almost a quarter of London's population. Now, COVID-19 is a horrible virus, and our deepest sympathies and prayers go out to anyone who's suffering from it, or who's lost a loved one. But history does set our situation in a broader perspective. Compared with earlier generations, at least we have a pretty good idea of how this virus is being spread, and what we can do to protect ourselves and safeguard others. But let's go back to Bishop Dionysius for a few moments. In his letter, he went on to contrast the attitudes and reactions of the Christians with those in Alexandria. He wrote, Our heathen neighbours have behaved in the very opposite way. At the first onset of this disease, they pushed sufferers away and fled even from their dearest, abandoning them in the streets before they were dead. They treated unburied corpses as dirt, hoping thereby to avert the spread and contagion of this fatal disease. But do what they might, they found it difficult to escape. From his and other people's accounts, we know that as the plague swept through the city, many people reacted in fear and panic, putting themselves first and abandoning anyone who was a threat to their survival. Now, we might criticise their response, but sadly, it's a pretty common human reaction. Whenever war strikes a nation, or illness and tragedy affects a family, people react in various ways. Some give in to fear, battening down the hatches, shutting out the world, and bunkering down until the threat has passed. But others make a different choice. Faced with uncertainty and the unknown, they make a conscious choice to serve others in their hour of need. Now it's this choice that St. Paul is commending to us in today's reading from his letter to the Romans. He says this, let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. In his former life as a persecutor of the newly emerging Christian sect, and fearing that his world was under threat, Saul led the hunt to track down believers. So vehement was his opposition that he presided personally over the stoning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Saul was complicit in his death, judicial murder in the name of God. Saul had been controlled by fear until that extraordinary day in his life when he was unexpectedly enveloped by the unconditional, overwhelming love and forgiveness of God as he journeyed to Damascus. Now, newly named as Paul, he begins to see everything in the light of God's love. He discards his old spectacles and views life through the lens of Jesus' saving death and resurrection. This way of seeing was at the heart of Jesus' teaching, rooted in the Old Testament background. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Having been confronted with such powerful, all-consuming, burning love, Paul commends this way of living to others. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. Six months on from the national lockdown in the face of COVID-19, we're endeavouring to recover from its trauma and inch our way forward into the autumn. Schools are returning, places of work are reopening, sport and leisure centres are back in business. We're learning to coexist with this virus as best we can, most experts think we're going to face localized spikes in infections, requiring short lockdowns in many areas, particularly as we move from autumn into winter. So this is a good time to take stock and draw deeply on riches from our storerooms of faith. And Paul's words today are as timely as they were when he first wrote them. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. But what do his words mean for us in our current situation? Well, it doesn't mean that we should try to mimic the response of our fellow Christians in Alexandria, 
when Bishop Dionysius was writing, heroes though they were. Based on our medical knowledge, we know that any one of us might be a super carrier of the virus. So all of us, from the youngest, youngest to the oldest, need to take sensible precautions and ensure that we are passing it on to others. It's not loving your neighbor as yourself if we give them COVID-19. We need to take responsibility for ourselves and be sensible if our doctor advises us to shield because we're especially vulnerable to the virus. But all that said, there are still plenty of ways we can love our neighbor. Offering to do shopping, picking up the phone, sharing an email, dropping around a friendly note through their door. We have a choice whether to be governed and controlled by fear or by love. Remembering the words of the Apostle John in the first of his letters, perfect love casts out fear. And finally, there's prayer. Prayer is something we can do at any time and in any place. Praying for others, for our neighbors, our community, our nation, our world, are all ways of loving others. And it's with a prayer written by Barbara Glassell, the president of the Methodist Conference, that I conclude. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people giving and loving, wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. So as we consider our response to Bishop Allen's words that the debt that we owe is love. That as we respond to those words let us make our confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please do stand to join me in saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to be seated or to kneel as we come to our time of intercessory prayer. Lord of the church, you call a broken people around your table. 
in times of disagreement, teach us to listen. Loose us from prejudice and bind us to your way of forgiving grace through Jesus Christ who stands at the heart of our gathering. Amen. And so I invite you to join with me in praying our prayer for mission. A prayer with love at the heart of it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and gifts you have poured upon us. Be among us today as we seek to serve you. Give us confidence and encouragement in all we do to share your love. May we walk always in the steps of Jesus. Help us to provide a warm welcome to all who long to know you. We pray that we may respond with the desire to share more of the love of Christ. Amen. Pray in love to God, the God who loves all that he has made. Let the whole church be filled with the divine grace which comes where two or three are gathered together in your name. And we pray today for Diane and those whom she will be licensed alongside as lay reader. We pray for her ministry and her commitment to the parish, parish that she will serve. And we pray too for Mother Alice Joy to be ordained priest this afternoon in Peterborough Cathedral. Bless your Christian people with unity to empower their prayers. Rouse the world from the slope of selfish and material concern. And so we pray for those who are returning to this country from places where it is necessary for them to quarantine on their arrival here. Good God, help them to show your love, their love for others, keeping those restrictions, not just for their own well-being, but for the well-being of others. Heal with the spirit of love, the disputes that divide people and nations. Bless our families, friends and neighbours with the spirit of reconciliation. Let your law be fulfilled among us in words of love. And so today we pray for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, for Thabu Makoba, the Archbishop of Cape Town and Primate of Southern Africa. Lord God, we pray that throughout Southern Africa, your love may be shown and experienced and received. We pray for those in our diocese who are going deeper into God, for those who act as soul friends and for their supervisors. In our parish, sorry, in our deanery of Luton, we pray for St Francis's Church, 
currently in vacancy, and for Sarah Hancock, the curate there. We pray for the readers, Alan Kinnamuth, Rod Mason, Barbara McIntosh, and we join them in giving thanks that their church has been gathering online for their all-age services and has been joined by many visitors. And we join them in praying as they seek a new vicar for their church, for all who may be involved in that process. Come and relieve those who are caught in bitter litigation. Help the victims of injustice who suffer under loveless power. And so we pray for the people of Birmingham following last night's major incident. For the lives that have been changed due to the multiple stabbings there. We pray too for all those people trapped at the reservoir in California as the wildfire runs ravage around that area. And while we may not agree with the methods undertaken by Extinction Rebellion, for the protests they are undertaking and for the Christian climate action campaigners, we pray that the action they take will be heard and will be noted, that our government may make the changes necessary to prevent this world hurtling towards disaster. The Lord God, we pray that we as your people may support and enable the changes necessary both in our lives individually and in our lives corporately to save your world from destruction. We pray for those who have tried to follow the way of love. And we pray for those who are ill at this time. For Maureen, Alison, Diana and Dallas. For Diane, Leslie, Josie, Elsie, Michael and Moira. For Jane, John, Karen, Madge and David. For Daniel, Tony, Patricia, Annette, Richard and Jen. And we pray for those who have tried to follow the way of love and are now at rest. Barbara McAward. In the fullness of your love, give them perfect freedom. And so I invite you to, in love, pray to your Father with any individual petitions or thanksgivings. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite you to stand as we share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace 
and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And as I lay the altar, I invite you to make your offerings to God, those financial offerings that you wish to give to this parish, that our work may be work that is God's work. Almighty and most merciful God, out of the fullness of your gifts we offer you this bread and this wine and our lives. Blessed be your holy name forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please do stand for our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to, our, to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and has scattered the darkness of death with light that never fades. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, 
the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with angels, with choirs of angels, and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve us. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup and so that we in the company of the blessed virgin mary saint anne saint christopher and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through jesus christ our lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. 
Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. And so as I receive the body and blood of Christ, I do so on behalf of and with all who are gathered here today. And as I receive, I invite you to make your spiritual communion, that you may share in God's love, that you may know his grace and his mercy, that you will know his love and the love that you are invited to share. The deer that yearns for loving, for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
Let us pray. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our notices. So a reminder for you that Diane will be licensed as a lay reader to this parish at 2.30 this afternoon. The service will be live streamed uh, through uh, YouTube and for those of you who are following the, what, the Facebook page, the WhatsApp prayer group or the WhatsApp parish chat, you all have access to the links there. If you haven't got those, uh, the links, then go to the St Albans Cathedral page and search for their YouTube link there. So go to the St Albans Cathedral YouTube page and look for the link. Tonight we will have the opportunity to welcome Diane as our new lay reader. At six o'clock this evening we will be holding a service of evening prayer which Diane will be leading. So that will be the very first service that Diane will lead as a lay reader. That too will be live streamed on our Facebook page, Parish of Luton, St Anne with St Christopher. So please do come along for that at six o'clock. I'd like to extend huge thanks to those people yesterday who not only gave up their time to be at the churches to collect food, but also to all those, both church members and people in our community who donated food yesterday for the Luton Food Bank collection. We will be repeating that again on Saturday the 3rd of October. That will be our Harvest Festival weekend. So please do bring along food for the Luton Food Bank on that Saturday. That will be 11 till 1 at St Anne's, 12 till 2 at St Christopher's. Straight after this service at 12.30, there will be the Zoom virtual refreshments and we'll be doing the same on Wednesday at 11.45 after the Wednesday morning service. The Zoom also house group will be on Thursday at 7.30. Do encourage you, speak to the ministry team to find out more about the Zoom things because it is a really good way of being able to see people and engage and have fellowship and talk to people and learn from one another. So please do, if you've not already done so, ask for the codes and come along. Just one more notice to let you know that both next Wednesday morning service and next Sunday morning service will both be services of morning worship. So I invite you to bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>